Hi, I'm Lisa Curcio and welcome to Lisa's Stamp Studio. Today's video is all about card layouts or card sketches. The words are synonymous. Basically, a card layout gives you an idea on where the elements of your card can be placed to make the design process a lot easier. My card layouts are not just going to give you ideas, they're also going to give you measurements. During today's video, I'm going to be demonstrating this card, but I'm also going to provide you with two other card ideas using the exact same layout or sketch. If you're here visiting from YouTube, you'll find a link down in the video description below, which will lead you over to the sketch picture, as well as cutting dimensions and supplies for the cards I'm going to share today. And I'd love to have you come back because I'm doing an entire series on card layouts and sketches. And if this is your first time visiting my channel, I would love to have you subscribe. Make sure you click that small bell icon that's next to that subscribe button so that you'll receive notifications of when I'm live here on YouTube, as well as when I upload a new video. Let's head over to the stamp table and let's get started on today's project. Here is the card that we're going to be creating together today. Really pretty. Make sure you stay with me to the end of the video. I have two other cards using the same layout to give you other ideas. Let's start with the stamping. I'm going to bring out the flower from the Floral Essence stamp set. You're going to see it here. It actually is offered as a bundle, which means you can save 10% by getting both of these pieces together. So this is the punch that punches out the petals. Wonderful savings because it's going to create the most beautiful blossom. In addition to that, you're going to find that this leaf also fits another punch that we sell in the catalog, and it's the leaf punch. Now it's not part of the bundle, but it can be purchased separately, and we'll be using both of those. I'm going to be using Memento ink. The Blackberry Bliss cardstock is very, very dark, and I even found tone on tone with the same ink and paper. It was a little bit obscure, so I decided to use the Memento Black. I'll go ahead and now ink this up. I want to make sure that these two petals are at the bottom since that's going to align perfectly with the punch. So I have one here, and I'll stamp another one next to it. And we'll need two to create that whole blossom. I'll set those aside, and while I have that black ink pad out, I'm bringing in a small strip of Whisper White cardstock. And I've pulled out the greeting from that exact same stamp set. So I'll go ahead and ink that up, and I'm going to stamp that on here. I'll push that off to the side, and now I'm going to bring in a piece of Old Olive cardstock. And this time I'm going to use the exact same ink as the cardstock. Stampin' Up's color coordination is one of the most amazing things. So the ink pad matches the cardstock that matches the marker and the accessories and so on. Here's that leaf stamp we talked about. I'll go ahead and I'll ink that up and I'll stamp that here. Now if you find that that is too dark, you can go ahead and stamp it again so you get a slightly lighter tone. And I think I like this one better. So I'm going to stamp off one more time right over that since I've already wasted that area. And then I'll stamp the other here. Here's that leaf punch we talked about. We'll come up inside of here and we'll just line that up the best that we can and we'll go ahead and punch out that image. And we'll do the same on this one. Let's work now on our petals. We're going to use the perennial flower punch and we'll come inside here and we're going to line those up. That might be difficult for you to see here on the video since the cardstock is rather dark. So there's one and then here is the other. I'm going to bring these petals to life just a little bit and I'm going to use my bone folder to do that. I'm turning the petal upside down and I'm bracing it between my thumb and index finger on this hand. And very much like you would curling ribbon, I'm going to come up underneath here and I'm just going to lightly curl those petals. I'm breaking down the fibers and the paper just so that the cardstock curls just a little bit. And I'll do the same now with this one. Once I have those ready, I'm going to attach them together and the easiest way is to use a glue dot. So I'm going to reveal one of the glue dots here. I'll take the back side of my flower and I'll press the center here and then I'll lift and that'll put the glue dot on the back. And then I'm going to offset these petals to make my blossom. The next step is this gorgeous perennial essence vellum. This coordinates with the suite of designer series paper, the stamp set and the punch I just shared with you. It does come in three colors and you'll be able to find that in the Stampin' Up! annual catalog. Now, if you don't already have a demonstrator and you're interested in receiving a complimentary copy, head over to lisasstampstudio.com and click on Contact Me, and I'll be happy to provide you with a copy. I've got my embossing machine here, and I'm going to be using the Country Floral Embossing Folder. I've got my vellum, and I'll place that inside, and then I'll place this on top of my machine, and then I'll go ahead and crank that through. Typically, you would use it this way with the embossed images raised on the front, but I'm going to flip it over because I loved the white creases from the vellum and the pressure of the folder. This will lend some credence to our card. 
The Perennial Essence Designer Series paper has beautiful, realistic watercolor images. And like most of the Stampin' Up! papers, they are double-sided, which gives you lots of options. One side is going to be very reminiscent of the theme of the paper, and the other side is going to be more generic, so you can use it all year round on different types of cards. I'm going to place adhesive on the back side of my Designer Series paper, and I'm going to adhere this to a layer of Whisper White cardstock. I'm going to leave a small border of color all the way around and I'll press that in place. This is Blackberry Bliss cardstock that coordinates with the paper we made the flower from. I'll go ahead and I'll fold that in half. I'm a big fan of my bone folder for that nice crisp edge. And then we're going to go ahead and build our card. The designer series paper is going to go here in the center. So I'll go ahead and I'll add adhesive around the outside edges. And then I'll attach this here. I'm doing my best to keep the same margin of color all the way around. Next is the vellum. Now one thing about vellum that's usually a problem is that you're going to be able to see adhesive from the back side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to adhere my flower first. That's going to give me an area that's going to be hidden from the back and then we'll camouflage with a couple glue dots. I'll flip my flower over and I'm going to go back to my glue dots again to adhere this to the vellum. And because now my blossom is a little bit bigger, I'll add several glue dots to the back. That's going to get mounted here just off center. I'm flipping the vellum over and this is an area that I can provide more adhesive. I can press my paper right onto the glue dot and that'll give me an area to hide it. I'm also going to place another glue dot here near the top and I'm looking for an area that might not show, one that's a little bit more white. So I'm going to press one here and then I'm going to tack this off to the left side of this card. I'm leaving a very tiny margin of color here and here, a little bit of that designer paper showing and then I'll press that in place. You're going to need one more glue dot and this time I want to actually create a little bit of card surgery as I call it. So I'm going to take my glue dot from here. I know it's going to distort the shape just a little bit. This is the take your pick pickup tool with the paper piercing tool attachment. And this time I'm going to hide it right underneath here where one of those petals is going to fall. It doesn't have to be completely anchored down for this to work. Here are those leaves that we created a few minutes ago and I'm going to do the exact same thing. I'm just going to condition this paper just a little bit. Again, holding it upside down and I'm going to curl those leaves just so they look a little bit more realistic. And this time, instead of glue dots, I want to show you a little trick. We're going to use the silicone craft sheet. I absolutely love this product because adhesive, liquid glue, and hot glue will not stick to it, which makes it wonderful when you're paper crafting, so you don't have to worry about gunking up your surface. I'm going to flip this over. Now, I know this area from here down is going to be hidden underneath my flower, so I'm going to use adhesive versus glue dots. And I'm going to place that right here on the back. That amount of adhesive is actually going to hold my leaf in place a lot better. So I'm going to position this underneath my petals and press. And I'm going to do the same thing with the other leaves here. And this time I'm going to maneuver them underneath this side. And then I'll press those in place. The greeting that we stamped is here. I'm going to flip that over. I'm using several full size dimensionals. And then I'll remove those paper backings. That now is going to get mounted here to the upper right side of my card. I wanted to finish off the center and play up that white a little bit, but I want to also stay with that very feminine soft look. So I decided to add a few pearls. You can see I use these quite often. So with that paper piercing tool attachment, I'm going to come up here and I'm going to pick up some of these smaller ones. They have glue dots already on the back, which makes them easy to use. And I'll place another one here. And then I have one other that I'll place down here as a trio. It's a beautiful card, isn't it? But I promised you several others using this exact same sketch or layout. Card layouts are wonderful because it's going to help you create other cards with different products and different stamp sets. So you're going to see here it's the exact same layout. This card has a slightly larger area here than this one, but it plays up the daisy for this image well. The image doesn't have to go here on the strip, so manipulate it so that it works well. You'll also see that I've moved the greeting. And then my third one is this. Now you might be wondering where that strip is. Well, in this case, I've substituted it for the ribbon and I've used a small cluster of smaller flowers, different designer series paper. My greeting is larger, but it's in the same place as my original card. Down in the video description below, you're going to find a link that's going to lead you over to the card layout or the card sketch. I've included measurements there for you. You'll also be able to see the pictures to all three of these cards as well as the supplies. If you have enjoyed today's video, please give it a thumbs up here on YouTube. It makes them and I both very happy. And I look forward to seeing you back with me next time. Have a great day.